this uh, crazy early hour. Uh, <laughs> and uh, thank you to the, the Rails Pacific team for putting on this great conference. I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Um, hello, people. Uh, my, my name is Line. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, speed and access. Today I'm going to talk about integration and invoked static messages. I'm going to talk about developers. Um, so, uh, infrastructure scale framework, Scala, basically Terraform services and Ruby, next I'll use uh, the application of reflection and storage and action in the client. Uh, it looks like it's time for a demo. Um, okay. Let's let's see what this is about. Um, so, use the Python ism controller, and here we are. Okay, and um, rake data. All right. So I'm going to put this into a rake file. And um, okay, um, I'm going to I'm going to move on. Uh, great. So, so how did it happen? LSTM and the future, copyright 2011, Cisco and its affiliates. All rights reserved. Good. Good. Torch RNN is open for testing, deployment, children, others. Let's take a look. Um, okay, we'll try this one out. Is this it? No. Um, maybe it's the next one. No. Uh, that's not it. Yeah, this is it. So you can go to this this page, and and this is how it works. Um, this this repository, it's it's all from here. Okay, I'm going to move on. So policies are dry. Do not repeat yourself. Do not repeat yourself. Let's go to policies.html. Ruby is great. Ruby is pain, Ruby is required, Ruby's home, Ruby's Ruby. To counter that, each of you will have new controllers to test. Uh, 
So it looks like um, I, I'm going to move on. Uh, okay. Um, so question for you guys. Uh, who here is online? Show of hands. Okay, some of you guys. Cool. Uh, who here is using Ruby on Rails? So everyone in the room should be, yeah. Okay. Uh, who here is consulting? All right, a couple of you guys. Uh, who's using jQuery? Cool, yeah. Um, who's programming specifically for MVC? One guy. Um, anyone automatically logging into a server here? Nobody. Okay. Who has headlight skills? No? Okay. Um, let's see. Any accessories? Okay, it's known as the database. Uh, I'm, I'm moving on. Um, I, I want to tell you guys a story. It was May 30th, 2013, and one time I heated Cisco, Amazon EC2, Stack Talk Factor on a Rails beta test. Being a metal developer, I installed. Yeah, Google it. It's, it's JavaScript. I want to tell you another story. There was once a distributed Heroku C resource. Blocks and simulations provide scalable continuous integration, he said in Ruby to the engineer. But what about Unicorn and or signing of the functionality, the failure? The engineer replied. Mac Ruby on Rails, he said in the console. And then he developed a client server application. Uh, I've got a URL here. I'll click on it. I'm going to go to this URL. I don't know what it's about. Rights reserves. So go for the cloud. I think that production code is broken in Rails. Our mark methods, session objects, monolithic consulting. Your password has been reset. All the code is clean. Control, check, the company file agreement, only confidential. Exclusive domain, capitalist filter. Docker, Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails. Let's do some live coding. Okay. 
When Jason, Lennox is most developed by stake development. Check it out. Dave, self should equal type. Tweet about it. One, fifteen, thirty-two, five. So let's keep the conversation going. I don't want this to end here. Tweet about it. Hashtag vegan. Hashtag French script. Hashtag cloud wrestling. And hashtag ox. Let's get the word out there. Thank you for agile and remote connections. You are the best developers and development. You need middleware. Uh, the Q&A right now. Uh, can, you, can you stop some music? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Max, could you tell us uh, what was going on uh, with your presentation uh, <laughs> behind the scene? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been really interested in these... these uh, sorts of machine learning algorithms that are coming out that take uh, like a database of text or information about a topic and then create, mimic that information and create something that's sort of like it but not quite there. And, and what's interesting to me about it is that right now they don't necessarily work that well. And it's this interesting space where it's not something like your TV where you can turn it on and it just works, or like, you know, running an FFT on an audio signal um, where you know what the output's going to be, but there's this strange uh, kind of otherworldly output of these, these programs. And um, so I thought for this talk I would explore, you know, what would it mean to follow that in and what would that you know, say about what we're doing here? And um, why did you uh, get started on this projector, uh, projector of like uh, machine determined uh, type of work? Um, I've been doing this for about a year. Um, I I'm not sure exactly how it started. Um, I think that like when, when I started the, the travel project, um, it was a lot about there are so many options for, for what we can do um, and how do you choose among those and letting a computer choose seemed like a, a reasonable choice. Uh, yeah. um, so tell us about your, your robot that uh, board here to Taipei, Taiwan. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a computer program that it knows something about, um, like, the cost of travel in the world. And um, so it knows that, like, within my, my budget, here are all the different places that I can be. And uh, then it chooses randomly between those um, and sends me off to, to one of those places. So I, I 
didn't know that I was going to be here um, until about a month ago. So besides this robot, what types of like uh, normal work, right? freelance work, that kind of stuff? Uh, tell us about all that stuff. Sure. Yeah, I mean, like the, the way that I, um, outside of you know art projects and, and things like that, make uh, a living is doing freelance software work um, for you know clients building websites and, and apps and things like that. So you told me you started using uh, Ruby and you explore Rails very early. Uh. Yeah, you know, I think like part of the reason why I wanted to do this is I was thinking about um, the way that I got started in programming. And I think like a, a lot of us, um, I learned about Ruby through the internet and through this, this internet-based community of people uh, learning about this language. Um, I, I think my first programming tutorial was a Why the Lucky Stiff um, uh, Ruby tutorial, and um, I've been watching talks about Rails and Ruby um, since I was in middle school, and so um, I thought it would be interesting to sort of reflect on what, what that's about. Can you tell us why you left uh, the cushy jobs at Google to be here? <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot of things you can be doing in the world, and I, I think it's it's interesting to be to to be uh, to be here. Yeah. So tell me, um, besides uh, getting a job as a software developer, right? Uh, you also have this type of lifestyle that you um, sort of custom made for yourself and can you tell us about how uh, right now how you're living how uh, become a programmer let you do uh, your position today and how is that working out for you yeah I mean like I think that um, especially people who work with with software it's um, becoming a lot more possible to do um, these flexible sorts of uh, work styles um, where you can be, it doesn't really matter where you are physically because you're interacting through code and through email anyway. Um, and so I guess the, the way that I'm, I'm living is taking advantage of that. So I don't have to be physically in one place. And that means that I can, I can tweak that. And the sorts of experiences that you have in different places in the world are um, change the way that you think. So, final question. Mm -hmm. um, what's next? Like, where are you going to go? Like, what kind of project are you going to make? Uh, is there other uh, area of, of uh, exploration that you want to try? Um, right now, I'm still interested in this, this um, computer-generated path. And so, uh, in about one month, I'm going to ask the computer where I'm going next. And um, I'll follow whatever it says, no matter what. And then usually there's something about the place that I go to that uh, helps me decide what to do next. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's Max Hawkins. Can we take some questions? Sure. So when you generate a presentation based on slides, you um, how long would it take to actually generate something? Um, it was the... Um, Neural net that I trained, um, I, I downloaded about 14,000 slide share presentations about Ruby on Rails mm -hmm. and uh, fed all the text, which is about like 100 megabytes of uh, slide text, yeah. into the, the uh, LSTM mm -hmm. recurrent neural net. And then it's been training for about 24 hours. Oh. And uh, some of the output is, is the Either output thing. after that. Yeah. <laughs> and so, theoretically, you can generate something right now. And <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. It could just be, did you actually just generate the first thing to see, or did you have to do it like several times to get uh, something more mm -hmm. sense, 
with the skill set. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, the way that I, I've been working with it is um, it's possible so these, these neural networks um, are basically looking at what are the characters that came before and then predicting what the next character is going to be mm -hmm. based on that. Yeah. And so, like, if you um, typed in, hello, my name is, it's probably going to be a name afterwards or something like that based on the data. And so the way that I've been working is to structure, like, a, a rough outline of a talk mm -hmm. and then um, delete parts of it and have the neural net fill in the gaps oh, right. um, using that priming feature where you can say, I, I want the first part to be this, and then it will complete the sentence. Okay, so they will be kind of related, the slides and the slide after the slide will be kind of related. Yeah. The, the big problem with um, neural nets right now is that uh, because graphics card memory is, is limited, and graphics cards are, are what um, are generally used to train neural nets, um, you can't model very long-term dependencies. And so often the output of a neural net will um, start talking about something and then sort of lose interest and go off onto another random path. And you have to do some tricks to make it coherent. And the structure is attempting to do that, to kind of keep it on the same track. Oh, OK. Good, thanks. Do you think about open source your project, or mm -hmm. we can generate by ourselves? Which project? Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, can, can you show uh, how to uh, generate some slides now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll do a I'm little demo. That. Um, so I, I did this. This is a great open source project. Googling how to use it with multiple GPUs, which is not possible. Um, so if you go to um, this, this page, the instructions are actually pretty good, and it's very simple to use. You put in um, a set of text and then train it for um, 24 hours or so, and you can start uh, sampling text out of it. So um, the one thing that you do need in order to train one of these is a GPU card. It's possible to do it on a CPU, but it's really slow. Um, so you have to have a, a powerful graphics card. Luckily, Amazon lets you rent those. Uh, There's an EC2 instance type. Um, it's called the G2 2x large and 8x large. And, and both of these have, have GPUs. So you can spin up one of these instances and install some graphics card drivers. They have pretty decent instructions on how to do that here. There's actually an NVIDIA custom version of Docker that you can install, which allows you to do Docker images that uh, have graphics card processing in them. So I'll, I'll pull up uh, my EC2 instance, which is running right now. The, here's the command. There's this NVIDIA Docker command. And once you have that set up, then you can run the torch RNN image. And there's a training step where you take input data and turn it into this intermediate data format. 
and then put it into the training program. There are some parameters you can change that change the complexity of the model, which determines how long it's going to take, but also the quality of the output. And then I've already trained a network. So you can run another program to sample that network and get some output from it. I'll do that right now. About every five minutes or so, the program outputs a checkpoint which shows you what the network is learning at that point in time. And you can sample from those checkpoint files. So this has been running for a long time. So there are a lot of different checkpoints at different stages in the training. And if you look at the first checkpoint, It's going to work, I think. So this is the first five minutes of the program running. And it hasn't really figured out what language is yet or what words are. It's just kind of gobbledygook. But then pretty quickly, within maybe half an hour or so, it starts to figure out some basic idea of how the text is put together. We have things that look a little bit more like English. There's the word Ruby in here. Learns that pretty quick. And learns some punctuation. The, the slide bullets are in there. And then after a little, little while longer, it starts to learn some of the tropes of the data, which is what I find interesting about this stuff that it knows that there are people talking about gigabytes and, and booting and distributions in the data, and it starts to mimic that. And then I'll, I'll show you um, the most recent checkpoint. So it's still pretty abstract, but occasionally you find these nuggets of, of wisdom or something that seems like it's smarter than you would expect. And so a lot of my process for putting together the presentation is finding those interesting bits and then trying to put them into the slide presentation. So you guys can get started with this really quickly, and I, I would recommend checking it out. Um, there's a lot of different things that people have been doing with this this tool and, and other tools like it. Um, I have a startup name generator that you guys might like. Uh, generates an infinite list of startups. There are people who have been writing movie scripts with it. 
doing abstract poetry, uh, generating Paul Graham-like uh, text, things like that. So check it out. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.